Good morning. If that works. Good morning and welcome to this. Are we okay to start? Is, am I okay to start? Okay, just want to make sure. All right. Welcome to this informal workshop, which is to receive comments on the provisions of the State Water Board's decision relating to the Salton Sea and whether the State Water Board should take further actions to address the Salton Sea's future in light of Imperial Irrigation District's petition seeking changes to revised order WRO 2002. I'm Felicia Marcus, Chair of the State Water Board. To my left is Vice Chair Fran Spivey Weber. To her left, Board Member Didi Diadamo. To my right, Board Member Tam Dodek. And to her right, Board Member Stephen Moore. Um, evacuation procedure. Uh, it, for this building, look and see where the nearest exit sign is. If you hear an emergency sound, that means it's time to leave and pick up your stuff and your friends and uh, proceed safely outside the building. We reconvene near J and 10th, so come look for us if you want to know when the all clear sounds. Um, the other um, issue that's important is that the meet, is this, this meeting is being webcast, right? It's being webcast and recorded. Um, so when you come to the microphone, that's for the people sitting here as well as people, get fairly close to the microphone, not rock star right up against it because then you hear static uh, on the webcast, but you need to be close enough to it that people can actually hear you. The fact that we can hear you is nice, but we really want the people in the back of the room and on the webcast to also be able to hear you. Also, please take your electronics and set them on stun or silent or turn them off, just out of courtesy to everyone else. Um, I will be, we'll be taking a lunch break at some point and I will endeavor, although we have a very full agenda, I will endeavor uh, to take some short, um, two short breaks, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Hello, Senator. But please don't, um, you know, hesitate, of course, to go leave. The cafe downstairs actually has pretty good food um, and decent coffee, so um, you should have everything you need in the in the building. Uh, we may not take a full hour lunch break, however, because it's such a long day. I, I think the schedule suggests an hour. We may take less than an hour since we're starting late, so uh, just make sure you use the break to get snacks or whatever you need to make it through. The workshop is being held in accordance with the public notice dated February 6, 2015. It is an informal workshop. The State Water Board will not take any formal action today and there will be no sworn testimony or cross-examination of participants. The board members and its staff may, however, ask clarifying questions of speakers. After receiving comments at the workshop, the State Water Board may provide direction to staff regarding future activities. On November 18th, 2014, Imperial Irrigation District filed a petition with the State Water Board seeking modification of revised order WRO 2002-2013. This order was adopted by the State Water Board on October 28th, 2002, and subsequently revised on December 20th, 2002. The revised order authorized long-term transfer of up to 300,000 acre-feet of water per year from the Imperial Irrigation District to the San Diego County Water Agency, the Coachella Valley Water District, and the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California for a period of up to 75 years. The revised order required Imperial Irrigation District to mitigate the potential adverse impacts of the transfer on the Salton Sea, addressing such issues as salinity and selenium, air quality, and fish and wildlife. To meet the mitigation requirements, the Imperial Irrigation District has implemented a number of actions, including providing replacement water to the sea to mitigate for reduced inflows. The revised order required the Imperial Irrigation District to provide replacement water for a period of 15 years in order to provide an adequate period of time to allow the state to study the feasibility of restoration and to identify and begin implementation of a restoration plan. The Imperial Irrigation District has expressed concern that the program will end in 2017 and a decline of water surface elevation and increase in salinity levels at the Salton Sea will accelerate if no plan to restore the Salton Sea is in place. 
The State Water Board is aware that there are several different plans being discussed for the Salton Sea. At this workshop, we're seeking information on the status of mitigation and restoration planning, the timing and funding of work, and efforts to provide an overall framework to address long-term issues. The State Water Board is specifically interested in receiving input regarding the following questions based on the current status of efforts focused on the Salton Sea. First, how can the State Water Board promote implementation of a reasonable and sustainable plan to address the air, wildlife, and water quality problems at the Salton Sea? Number two, if there is a necessary and appropriate role for the State Water Board, what specific issues or obstacles need to be addressed and in what sequence and time frame? Number three, what changes, if any, should the State Water Board consider making to revised order WRO 2002-0013? Okay. But this other one was wrong. Um, I did that. We're going to begin, sorry, I have to read these for a workshop. It's awkward for me. I like to just chat. Um, we'll begin with a presentation from the State Water Board staff. Then we'll receive comments from current or former elected officials. And if the elected official is, panel is here, I know I got one. I uh, probably have more. If I look, if, if you, we could reverse the order depending on your schedule. So I'll give you that option um, as soon as I finish this. I'm almost done. Next, we'll have a petition panel that consists of the Imperial Irrigation District, the County of Imperial, and the Salton Sea Authority. After that, a Natural Resources Agency panel with representatives from the Natural Resources Agency, the Department of Water Resources, and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. In addition to these panels, we have additional panels and individuals scheduled to make presentations before we receive unscheduled comments. Staff has prepared an agenda that is available on the table in the back of the room if anyone is interested in the proposed order of panels and presentations. It may change uh, owing to scheduling requests from the panel participant, and we may pause between or during panels or individual presentations to allow elected officials to make comments. Any elected official or their staff who is not part of a panel should please let the clerk know that you're present. If you intend to speak today, please fill out a blue speaker card and give it to the clerk in the front of the room. If you're not sure whether you wish to speak, fill out a card and mark it if necessary. In order to ensure that all participants have an opportunity to participate, oral presentations from any interested persons may be subject to time limits. Great. Senator, would you like to go first? Sure, and the, there's a, is anyone else from the panel here? I'm I just sort of nearsighted. Um, uh, Mr. Wasaki with State Senator Jeff Stone. Hello. Um, and Assembly Member Eduardo Garcia. Here yet. Go ahead. Your, your pleasure. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the board. It's a pleasure to be here, and I, I want to thank you for taking up this issue. Uh, as an elected here, uh, starting the assembly about four years ago, I started working on trying to uh, come up with solutions to the Salton Sea, and it's been a, a challenge bringing all the stakeholders together to concur on a common solution. I kind of feel that, uh, <clears throat> I kind of feel like the, the ball in a ping pong game, actually, going from agency to agency and bouncing back and, and seeing how everybody works in their independent silos and how people have, uh, have stuck to their core missions. And I, and I admire everyone's commitment to their core missions and, and the organizations of which they serve, whether it be the APA or, or the Water Board or the Energy uh, Commission or all the different agencies we have in the state, which are numerous. All of us have a stakeholder interest in the solution of the Salton Sea. <clears throat> and it's hard to get anyone specifically to commit to be either the lead or a contributor in the solution. And that's what's been so frustrating on my, on my part because in the last four years I have not seen us coalesce around this issue as a state and, and work together to provide a solution. Most people are, are, are agreeing, yes, we need to do this. This is an urgent problem facing our state, but we, we're mostly engaging in finger pointing. And it's, it's uh, again, creating a very frustrating uh, situation for me. I'm, I'm trying to approach this as an independent uh, and objective broker of different parties. And looking at the problem, 
and, and looking at the, our statewide problems, whether they be the, the Delta problem, whether they be uh, the, the water drought, when we look at Salton Sea, Salton Sea has not risen to the level of those challenges in terms of people's uh, 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 priorities. And for that, we, we need to reevaluate this and look at the calamity that's before us. We have a sea that's shrinking in size that's gonna cause air quality problems in an area that already has the highest asthma rates in the country. We, we're, gonna, we're gonna see a sea that uh, as it erodes, it's gonna hurt the economy of one of the largest food production areas in our state, which is tied to our economy, which is tied to our source of food. If that production is eliminated, the cost of food in our state and the world is gonna be impacted by that. As we look at solutions around the, the you know, the, the drought and, and what we need to do to shore up our, our system. <clears throat> what we're, we're talking about creating new sources of res, new reservoirs in our state, which are gonna be costly. What are the amount of billions involved in creating these reservoirs and the impact of the environment? It's gonna be big. But we have a reservoir in the Salton Sea that we have not classified as a reservoir because of, of its level of contamination. Yet our goals are to clean it, to restore it, to allow it to be a place for people to recreate, for, for birds uh, that are currently on the endangered list to sustain themselves from. Yet, we're not looking at it 20, you know, 10, 15, 20 year, years down the road. Most of these dams that we plan to build in the state will, will probably build, be built 10 years down the road. If we invest resources into the Salton Sea, we could potentially see a reservoir, the largest reservoir in our state, be located in a strategic area, in, you know, in Southern California where we need more storage and near the Colorado River where we take various transfers from. I'm hoping that you get more involved in this problem. There are solutions. We do have resources, but it requires people from different organizations and backgrounds to get together. And, and I'm, I'm willing to work with you to walk down this uh, process. If we do not do something now, I'm concerned that to the 2003 quantifica quantification settlement agreement will be undone at enormous peril to Southern California's water supply. And we should also look at that as a very pressing matter that we all need to coalesce around and, and prevent because we can create the water for our state and the storage and also improve this, this very important resource that we have in Southern California. I know we can do it, and I know that uh, if you guys uh, decide to move down this path, uh, the solutions are there. We just have to start implementing them. We have to start putting programs in the ground. I think there, there, people are getting frustrated that nothing has been done after pretty much 12 years since the quantification settlement agreement was signed, nothing has been done. Money was spent, but not a single improvement has been seen. And that, that and we have spent money in the millions, in the millions. Unfortunately, uh, the people of Southern California are getting uh, very fr uh, uh, frustrated with the lack of, of improvements and action. And I think it's gonna turn around the economy once people see a plan of action and an actual improvement start happening. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? All right. Good morning. The day after St. Patrick's Day. You know, it was a sea Every of green yes, yesterday. Yes, yes, everyone like looks uh, nice and rested. Well, good morning. My name is Eduardo Garcia. I represent the 56th Assembly District. And uh, to say 100% uh, of the Salton Sea is within our Assembly District. Uh, we represent the constituents of Imperial County and Eastern Riverside County uh, District. If nothing is done as it relates to Salton Sea restoration, uh, will face the most severe environmental and economic consequences that loom ahead when the mitigation water currently delivered to the sea under the quantification settlement agreement stops flowing in 2017. Um, I got to listen to the comments that uh, the senator had, 
uh, shared, and I echo um, his remarks as it relates to the next steps. I don't believe that uh, today uh, is uh, the moment where we point fingers, uh, who did, who didn't. I think today with all of the partners that are in the room, including yourselves, uh, we have a unique opportunity to move forward with a sound plan that can ensure that the environmental impacts, the economic impacts that have been highlighted by doing nothing uh, can ultimately be curtailed or minimized um, as a result of the water transfers. Uh, for me, this is an issue that is of uh, large priority because of the public health risks that are before us if doing nothing. Uh, we have a consensus uh, coming from our communities, from our district, as it relates to the course uh, that we ought to be taking uh, moving forward. Uh, we believe that there is uh, great opportunities out in the Salton Sea to address it from both a public and a private aspect, uh, at the same time meeting a few other goals that California has set forward. I speak of the renewable energy opportunities, I speak of the ecosystem opportunities, and I also speak of the economic development opportunities that exist at the Salton Sea. Uh, my hope is that after today's meeting, this won't be the last convening, but that it be the first of many uh, gatherings where we bring all of the stakeholders together and come up with a viable plan, a viable solution that is financially feasible and ultimately gets to the end goal. Uh, we don't want to see the quantification settlement agreement unraveled. What we want to see is the state to step up and meet its obligation. And I think from the presence of uh, our senator, uh, myself, and the elected officials, both on the local, county, government level, and more importantly, the community, the residents that you will hear from today, those who will be directly impacted by inaction, uh, it will be quite clear that uh, we want to move forward in a progressive way to address this issue. So on behalf of you know, the people that I represent uh, that encompasses 100% of the Salton Sea, I want to thank you for bringing us together. And I'm very hopeful that there will be uh, additional conversations and the avenues to be able to put forward a sound plan to address this pressing issue. We have um, limited time. Uh, time, uh, is, the clock is ticking, and uh, we're looking forward to working with you. And uh, uh, thank you very much for allowing me to say a few words on behalf of our constituents. So have a good day. Thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Wasaki? Thank you, Madam Chair and fellow board members. Um, it's good to see you today. First of all, I want to thank the chair and the board for taking this issue on. It's extremely important for the state of California and on behalf of Senator Jeff Stone, I just want to thank you uh, for having the courage to step forward and actually embrace this issue. As you know, this is an issue that's been studied to death. Um, since the 1930s, I think people have been looking at the Salton Sea and figuring out what we can do to maintain the lake level and to prevent any ecological disasters. 1930 is a long time ago. And what we want to see, and I echo the sentiments of Senator Hueso and Assemblyman Garcia, it's time for action. And on behalf of Senator Stone, I just want to applaud the State Water Resources Control Board for being willing to be the center point of any stakeholder process. Because unless we actually get people around a table, no solution is ever gonna be reached. State Water Resources Control Board, in our opinion, is the best, is the best opportunity for all the players to come together and reach a solution. Now, I understand that there's many financial interests, there's many environmental interests. Everybody needs to come together 
but around what table are they going to s sit? And we think that it's most appropriate for this entity to be at that table that they sit around. So I just wanna thank you. Um, you know, I don't have much else to add other than it's basically time to actually get something done. You know, the QSA is extremely important. Senator Stone believes that it ought to be maintained. Um, but we need people to start talking in a constructive manner and stop the finger pointing, as Senator Hueso and Assemblyman Garcia said. Um, so we're very encouraged. We look forward to working with you throughout the process. And I just want to thank the board for its activity in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your help Welcome in the future. Are there any other elected officials or representatives? Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to go out of order. Um, now, staff, take it away. Good morning. Let me start with an introduction. So with in front of you, you have um, Mitchell Moody, who is a water resource control engineer who will be providing our presentation. Matt McCarthy, a senior env water environmental scientist. Dana Heinrich, uh, OCC Council, and I'm Amanda Montgomery, the Program Manager for Water Rights Permitting. Good morning. This staff presentation will provide basic background information regarding the workshop subject matter. I will begin with some information on the Salton Sea, Colorado River Water Rights, and Water Rights of the Imperial Irrigation District, or IID. Then, in order to put the current IID petition in context, I will provide an overview of relevant board actions, including revised order WRO 2002-0013, which I will refer to as the 2002 order. I will also touch upon significant legislation relating to the Salton Sea and significant restoration efforts. Finally, I will introduce the IID petition and restate the purpose of today's workshop, including the questions of interest for the State Water Board. The Salton Sea is California's largest lake. Over the last few thousand years, intermittent fresh and saline lakes have repeatedly formed in the basin, either as a result of flood flows or as a result of the Colorado River changing course. The sea as we know it today was formed in 1905 when floodwaters of the lower Colorado River broke through a levee and were diverted into an irrigation canal leading into the Imperial Valley. Although the sea receives some natural flow, Approximately 90% of the freshwater flow to the sea is agricultural drain water from the Imperial Valley via an extensive drainage system constructed by IID in 1923. The salinity of the sea is approximately 50% higher than the ocean. Since it has no outlet, salts concentrate and nutrients enhance eutrophic conditions. This map shows the Salton Sea watershed extending from San Bernardino County south to Mexico. IID service area is shown in purple and the Coachelli Valley Water District is shown in green. The Alamo and New Rivers flow through the IID service area before entering the sea from the southeast and the Whitewater River flows through the Coachelli Valley Water District service area before entering the sea from the northwest. The Colorado River lies to the east with current IID diversion points at Imperial Dam and Parker Dam at Lake Havasu. The Salton Sea has distinct economic and cultural attributes. It provides a recreation area that attracts thousands of visitors annually and supports the local economy. It also has cultural significance to Native American groups, including the Torres Martina Band of Cahuilla Indians and the Cabazon Band of Mission Indians. <coughs> the constant supply of nutrients and relatively constant fresh water inflows have allowed a vibrant but precarious ecosystem to become established in and around the Salton Sea. The sea ecology provides a food source for fish eating birds and supports more than 400 bird species. The sea is a critical stop on the Pacific Flyway for migratory birds, including several threatened and endangered species. The Salton Sea National Wildlife Refuge was established at the sea in 1930 to preserve wintering habitat for waterfowl and other migratory birds. However, salinity in the Salton Sea is increasing and catastrophic die-offs of birds and fish have raised concerns 
about the long-term viability of the current ecology of the sea. Without a salinity control project and other measures, the salinity in the sea will continue to increase until salinity levels are too high to support a fishery and fish eating birds. Having to this point presented an overview of the Salton Sea itself, I will now turn to the legal framework that guides California's use of Colorado River water, IID's water right permit, and past actions of the State Water Board that are relevant to this workshop. <coughs> California's use of Colorado River water is subject to the law of the river. The law of the river is a collection of legal authorities that provides, among other things, that California's allocation of Colorado River water is limited to 4.4 million acre feet per year. Historically, California used more than its allocation because surplus water was available. As other basin states increased their use, there was a need for California to reduce its use. To address this need, California developed the Colorado River Use Plan in May 2000. The plan sets forth California's framework to use water within its allocation and includes the voluntary transfer of water from agricultural to municipal uses. On January 6, 1950, Water Right Permit 7643 was issued to IID. The permit authorizes the diversion of up to 10,000 cubic feet per second from the Colorado River on an annual basis for irrigation and domestic use on nearly 1 million acres of land. The permit also limits IID's total annual diversion under all its water rights and its federal contract to 3.85 million acre feet. The limit reflects that it is a collective right with other agricultural water users and is consistent with the seven-party agreement of 1931. This agreement established a priority system for water users within California of Colorado River water. In 1984, the State Water Board issued Decision 1600 regarding a complaint about flooding at the Salton Sea <coughs> caused by excessive agricultural runoff from IID. In the decision, the State Water Board found that IID's lack of water conservation was unreasonable and a misuse of water. IID was directed to take actions to increase water conservation, including development of a water conservation plan. Decision 1600 was followed by State Water Board Order WR88-20 in September 1988. Hearings were held regarding IID's conservation efforts and IID was directed to submit a plan for conservation sufficient to conserve at least 100,000 acre feet per year. The order also identified conserved water as a potential source of funding. Ultimately, in exchange for funding conservation efforts, the Metropolitan Water District acquired 100,000 acre feet per year of water conserved by IID. In 1998, IID and the San Diego County Water Authority submitted a petition to the State Water Board seeking approval of a transfer of water from agricultural to municipal uses. As a result of negotiations with other parties, the petition was modified to include other recipients of the transferred water. In October 2002, the State Water Board approved the requested transfer of water with the issuance of the 2002 order. The 2002 order was revised in December 2002 when Order WRO 2002-0016 was issued that both denied reconsideration and added clarification. The 2002 order was a key component of the Quantification Settlement Agreement, which will be discussed later in this presentation, that was under negotiation when the transfer was approved. The order authorized the transfer of 200,000 acre feet per year to the San Diego County Water Authority and 100,000 acre feet per year combined to both Metropolitan Water District and Coachella Valley Water District. The initial term of the transfer was for 45 years with an optional 30 year renewal period for a total of 75 years. In issuing the order, the State Water Board considered potential environmental impacts and socioeconomic impacts. As the State Water Board considered the IID transfer request, it had to consider a number of issues. The proposed transfer presented the potential of air pollution in the form of wind blown dust emissions from exposed salt and sea shoreline. 
The proposed transfer could also result in lower water levels and increased salinity and selenium concentrations in the sea, causing harm to fish and protected bird species. Socioeconomic impacts could also occur as a result of land fouling and making water available for the transfer. And the proposal raised the possibility of a deterioration in recreational, aesthetic, and cultural values in and around the sea. In approving the transfer, the State Water Board found that the benefits of the transfer outweighed the potential impacts to water quality, agricultural resources, and air quality. However, the Board required, among other things, that IID implement the Salt and Sea Habitat Conservation Plan, which called for maintaining salinity levels at the Salt and Sea that would have existed absent the transfer for a period of 15 years. The purpose of this approach was to mitigate impacts long enough to allow the state to complete an examination of the feasibility of long-term restoration and to develop a restoration plan for the sea. The board also required IID to mitigate air quality impacts for the life of the transfer to the extent feasible. The Quantification Settlement Agreement, or QSA, is important to consider when discussing water rights issues relative to the Salton Sea. The QSA describes a collection of agreements intended to settle long-standing disputes within California regarding the priority, use, and transfer of Colorado River water. It was entered into by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, California Water Agencies, the federal government, and Indian tribes in October of 2003. The QSA facilitates California's efforts to reduce the use of Colorado River water in accordance with the Colorado River Water Use Plan. The QSA also established water budgets for the parties and enabled them to pursue the petition for the long-term transfer of conserved water from agricultural to municipal uses. Following the issuance of the 2002 order, various legislation has been passed in support of salt and sea restoration. Three Senate bills were enacted in 2003, one of which established the legislature's intent that the state should undertake restoration of the sea. In addition, the Resources Agency was required to conduct a study to determine a preferred restoration alternative in accordance with the legislative mandate. The legislation also authorized the Department of Fish and Wildlife to assume the cost of QSA-related environmental mitigation in excess of $133 million. In 2005, the State Water Board held a workshop to hear an update on socioeconomic impacts and activities related to the 2002 order. In addition, the Board received an update on the status of any desalination projects by the San Diego County Water Authority. Since the 2000 legislation, efforts have begun by various state agencies to plan and assess the feasibility of salt and sea restoration. In May 2007, the Resources Agency published the Salt and Sea Ecosystem Restoration Program Preferred Alternative Report and Funding Plan. The plan considered nine separate alternatives for restoration and identified a preferred alternative costing $8.9 billion. However, the alternative has yet to be funded. Later, in August 2013, the Department of Water Resources, Department of Fish and Wildlife, the U.S. Geological Survey and the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation issued an interagency monitoring and assessment plan in support of ecological restoration at the Salton Sea. The plan is a flexible program-level guide that articulates high-level goals to inform project-level efforts. The plan will allow assessment of existing ecosystem efforts, establish a baseline against which to measure the success of future activities, and assist with the identification of data gaps. Monitoring is critical for informed decision-making and successful restoration efforts at the Salton Sea. Further support for a coordinated restoration approach to the Salton Sea is found in the California Water Action Plan issued in January 2014 that calls for protection and restoration of key ecosystems in the state, including the Salton Sea, provides that the Natural Resources Agency will partner with the Salton Sea Authority to coordinate restoration efforts calls for the immediate implementation of certain ecosystem restoration projects, <clears throat> and notes that the Natural Resources Agency and the Salton Sea Authority are developing plans for other restoration and economic development opportunities. 
In November 2014, IID filed a petition to modify the 2002 order. The petition requests that the State Water Board order the parties to the QSA and Salton Sea Authority to meet and confer to achieve a feasible restoration plan for the Salton Sea. And it also requests the State Water Board to modify the 2002 order to add restoration of the sea as a condition of the approval of the transfer. At this point, I would like to emphasize the comments Chair Marcus just made about the State Water Board's goals for this workshop. The focus of this workshop should be on larger planning and implementation needs rather than specific technical issues. In particular, the State Water Board is interested in the status of mitigation and restoration planning efforts and the willingness of interested parties to engage in the development of a shared vision for the future of the Salton Sea. In closing, as stated earlier, the State Water Board is specifically interested in receiving input regarding these questions. Number one, how can the State Water Board promote implementation of a reasonable and sustainable plan to address the air, wildlife, and water quality problems at the Salton Sea? Number two, if there is a necessary and appropriate role for the State Water Board, what specific issues or obstacles need to be addressed and in what sequence and time frame? And number three, what changes, if any, should the State Water Board consider making to the 2002 order? Regarding the notice and comment letters for this workshop, we've received nearly 250 comment letters. In the workshop notice, a deadline for comment letters was set for last Wednesday, and comments after that date were accepted but marked late. Regardless of when the comment was received, all comments will be entered into the record and considered along with verbal comments of parties that will speak today. This concludes the staff presentation. Staff are now available to answer any questions before the first panel is introduced. Thank you. Questions? I just have one question on the quantification settlement agreement. Uh, was mitigation a component of the QSA or that was just, um, negotiated as part of the uh, 2003 legislation? Uh, oh, I, I'm actually probably not the best person to answer the question because I'm not an expert on the QSA and there are, there are people here today who have signed that agreement and would probably be better. Um, I do know that it addresses um, mitigation and um, the cost and, and who will pay for it, and it provides for funding contributions from the um, water districts, and, and there's a cap on their commitment. It, it's the $133 million cap that, that Mitchell Moody mentioned in his presentation. Above that, um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife committed to um, pay any costs above that amount. And that that um, provision of the QSA has been the subject of litigation. And I don't know if you want to get into any more details there, but I'm not I, sure. I can, we can uh, wait for those that are, were more involved. Okay, good, thank you. Other questions? Um, great, it just, since we're running late, I think we should just jump in. Obviously, the purpose of holding the workshop is to answer these questions, but also to get everybody in a room um, and see where things stand uh, in, a, in an open setting. So let, let's just hop right into that. Um, uh, the next panel, thanks very much. You guys will be around. We'll have questions later, presumably. Imperial Irrigation District panel. Stephen Benson, President Board of Directors, Kevin Kelly, General Manager, Bruce Kuhn, Director, and Dr. Stephen Monday, County of Imperial Public Health Department. And they're scheduled for 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Oh, all right. Um, we have people coming in and continuing to come in. So if there's a, if you put your stuff on a seat next to you, you sort of pick it up or turn around and look for their people standing so they can have a seat. Thank you. That was demonstrating good behavior. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's our clicker. Yeah. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, I'm Steve Benson, President of the Imperial Irrigation District Board of Directors. Thank you for responding to our petition and holding this initial public workshop. Um, this is an important issue to the IED board and with me here today are all four of my fellow board members. Uh, Mr. Matt Desert, Mr. Bruce Kuhn on my left, uh, Norma Galin Sierra Galindo and Director Jim Hanks. So before I tell you about IED's mission, let me tell you a little bit about myself uh, and our board. I'm a fourth generation resident of the Imperial Valley. I manage my family's 80 year old forage and vegetable farm where we're currently implementing on farm conservation to meet the QSA. I am a proud father of four and uh, I look forward to the future for those children in the Imperial Valley. Our board is publicly elected by all voters in the Imperial Valley and represent five distinct districts. My district includes the southern and western shores of the Salton Sea and Director Hanks is the eastern and other half of the southern shore of the Salton Sea. Uh, our board has distinct backgrounds in engineering, education, law enforcement, agriculture, and construction. And to the IED's mission, our mission is to deliver water to the farms, cities, and industrial users of the Imperial Valley. We're over 100 years old. We also serve energy to ratepayers in both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys, and where we were one of the first to implement hydropower in California. So what happens at the Salton Sea is of paramount concern to the people who live, work, and raise families in both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. It is our duty as board members to ensure a positive future in the region for providing food and fiber to the nation, offering a healthy quality of life to our residents and, preser and preserving the unique environment that we call home. I think today it's 95 degrees. That is why we are here before you today. On behalf of my fellow board members, I wanna to extend to you a sincere thank you for holding this initial workshop I also want you to know that we are committed to working with the state, all stakeholders to move this process forward. And I'm pleased to introduce IED's general manager, Mr. Kevin Kelly, who will be speaking to you on behalf of IED. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, President Benson. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Marcus, members of the board. I also want to thank you for uh, uh, holding this workshop on uh, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Um, nothing clarifies the mind of an Irishman like having to wake up early on March 18th. <laughs> I want to speak to you about linkages. Uh, you'll hear from others today, I'm sure, that uh, this distinction between restoration and, and mitigation is being purposely blurred uh, by IID. And I would suggest to your board that uh, mitigation only makes sense if it fits into a larger framework of restoration. Uh, this first image here uh, is obviously of California. I want to return to it later, but before I do, um, I'd just like to say that as as a native of the Imperial Valley. Uh, I've always been proud uh, to be a Californian. Imperial County is the 58th of the 58 counties in California. But you can see that it's a long way away uh, from you folks here in Sacramento. Uh, were it not for the uh, resources that this part of California has, and that body of water there, the Salton Sea, um, it might be that you just ignored Imperial County. Um, I'm gonna suggest to you 
uh, why that can't be the case anymore. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the Salton Sea, and you can see both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. In reviewing the, the written comments that were submitted to your board, I find that our QSA partners uh, are all uniformly in favor of restoration. But restoration in the abstract. It's easy to be for a restoration plan uh, as an abstraction because nobody ever has to do anything. So we're 12 years into the nation's largest agricultural to urban water transfer. We've generated upwards of three million acre feet, either for transfer or mitigation, uh, make up to the river. That would fill Folsom Reservoir three times. So the scale of not only the, the water transfers, but that body of water uh, is something that you really don't appreciate uh, unless you're actually on the ground and, and can see it. And our petition asks you to come and see it. I would invite you to do it um, before a summer. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I, I want to go to the next slide. So this distinction between restoration and, and mitigation, um, I'd invite you uh, to have uh, something of an exchange on this if you'd like to talk about it, because uh, it may be that we, we uh, get to the heart of this quicker uh, than with me just uh, prattling on about it. But the reason that we are harping on restoration, it seems to me there are two uh, schools of thought uh, on this problem at the Salton Sea. One is the actual problem at the Salton Sea, and the second is that IID won't shut up about it. And the reason that we won't shut up about it is because in 2017, the Salton Sea falls off the cliff. And if you live in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys, then you're taking a chance. You didn't have anything to do with the nation's largest agricultural to urban water transfer. You're just, you live there. And the people who live there are mainly um, people of color. They work in agriculture. Nobody checked with them, right? The reason that we talk about restoration at the Salton Sea is because it can be done. Not for $8.9 billion. You'll hear from the resources agency here today, and you should ask them about that $8.9 billion plan. Because I'd submit to your board that that plan is actually an impediment to a meaningful discussion about what to do on the ground at the Salton Sea. Nobody believes it'll ever be built. Uh, we have our own ideas and idea about what to do out there, and it's mainly driven by uh, the exposed lake bed. What do we do about air impacts? We think that those uh, renewable resources that are unique to the Salton Sea ought to figure into the restoration of the Salton Sea. We'd like for that to come up uh, naturally in this facilitated dialogue we're calling for in our petition. Mitigation, if it happens exclusive of any restoration plan, is, is simply chasing after the wind. And by restoration, I'm using the term of art that was uh, uh, adopted by the state. We're conceding that the Salton Sea is going to be a smaller body of water. The hydrology of the Colorado River won't support a sea the size it is today. We're mainly concerned about what happens at the uh, 
at the exposed lake bed. I was here, I was actually here when the state board uh, did its 2002 order. I remember that process. And I would not presume at all that that uh, iteration of your board uh, was so cynical as to order a 15-year uh, mitigation water uh, regimen uh, simply to preside over the death watch of, of the Salton Sea. I remember it being an earnest effort to provide the state sufficient time to, to uh, arrive at, at, at a bona fide restoration plan. Why restoration? Because between 2003 and 2017, IID will have delivered 800,000 acre feet in mitigation water to the Salton Sea. If that wasn't to uh, provide a, a, a basis for restoration, then what good purpose did it serve in a drought? And of that amount, nearly 400,000 acre feet is set to be delivered to the Salton Sea in the next two and a half years. Mitigation without restoration makes no logical sense in a drought. The single greatest threat to the long-term viability of these water transfers isn't IID's petition. It's the Salton Sea. It's the unmet obligation by the state of California at the Salton Sea. I realize it's awkward for your board as a, an agency of state government uh, to call out that government. But you know what? Your board's already taking on big issues, right? Well, we, we brought you another one. That's why we're here. Why restoration? Because IID never would have entered into this transfer agreement but for that unequivocal um, promise by the state. And it wasn't an empty promise. It wasn't an illusory promise. It was, a, uh, it was a firm commitment, and it was relied on by IID. And after that uh, water order by the state board in 2002, IID was called on to vote to approve the, the quantification settlement agreement, and it failed three to two. A year later, with unbelievable pressure on that elected board, it approved the deal. Three to two. Uh, members of the state board, I'd like to introduce the swing vote. <laughs> Both times. Uh, Both Bru times. Bruce, Bruce Kuhn is here today. He's going to speak to you, um, and he's going to bring a, uh, a real world and a real politic dimension to that time frame. Uh, Director Kuhn. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, as Mr. Kelly stated, uh, <laughs> I was president of the board at that time. I always voted last. And the first vote on this thing, it was I had two yes and two no but I didn't have assurance that the Salton Sea would be taken care of. Had I had the, re the, the um, assurance that the Salton Sea would have been taken care of, I would have voted then, but I didn't, and I hadn't got it. So to say, uh, was I in a position of pressure, no person in the world should be sitting there with two no, two yes, and be the single vote, and I submit to you today no doubt in my mind, on the second vote, 
when we were in the governor's office and Richard Katz was uh, his, uh, I, I don't, I'm not gonna say he was chief of staff, but he was certainly in, in charge of the negotiations. And I actually got to like him pretty well. He's, he's a very knowledgeable, very, very funny guy to be around, cowboy boots and all. <laughs> uh, we were in negotiations. The sticking point on this thing was the Salton Sea. And I will always recall, I was one of the main negotiators. And I said, we cannot have a deal unless the Salton Sea is taken care of. And it will not be taken care of by local people because it, it's just too much of a financial burden for, for the small amount of people that live in the area. We couldn't do it, still can't. And I'll always recall so clearly, Richard jumped up and he said, then the state will take it. And I said, cowboy, you got a deal. <laughs> and from that, from that exchange, the state, and it was asked here today, how did, where was that mitigation or when did that come to be? I, I am the last person in the world who's supposed to be here today because this was su such a contentious issue and I was running for re-election and I knew if I did cast a yes vote on this, I was gonna be fired. And I was. So for me to get re-elected and be back to, to be before this board for this presentation, I truly feel I should be wearing a hockey mask because he's back. <laughs> anyway, I am the least um, likely person to be here. I am glad to be here. The mitigation, the state became contractually obligated with mitigation through those negotiations with Richard and uh, Department of Fish and Game, uh, Metropolitan, San Diego, Coachella, we were all there. And we were in the governor's office. At one time, the governor himself was in attendance. And after the changing of the governors, uh, there was another meeting where uh, Governor Schwarzenegger was was uh, in attendance. So it went to the highest echelons of state government that the state of California was made aware that they were both responsible for the mitigation, but simultaneously, before the vote, before the vote was taken, the state had signed on as a signator of the contract to be contractually obligated, leave no doubt in your mind, the state is contractually obligated for the mitigation arising from the transfer. But simultaneously, and in order to get my, I assume to get my vote, the state legislature passed the Salt and Sea Restoration Act. And in conjunction with the transfer, the contractual obligation for, for the mitigation of the transfer, and the passing of the Salt and Sea Restoration Act, then and only